Hello and welcome to Direct Talk. I'm Salam Burhana, your host for the day. Joining us in the studio is Geta Cho Radda, uh, advisor to the president of Tigray and a member of Central Command. Uh, Geta Cho, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, yesterday marks a year from September 9th uh, Tigray election. The Ethiopian government at the time had postponed elections under the pretext of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, why did the ruling party TPLF, of which you are an executive member of, deem it necessary to go forward with the election? For, for, for one thing, holding elections is the most normal thing uh, one would do if uh, you at least have a pretension of being democratic, let alone the people of Tigray who have paid dearly for uh, their right to self-determination, the right to vote, and other democratic rights. So it was only uh, natural that we decided to go ahead with elections uh, in accordance with the constitution. Uh, second, we knew uh, the regime in Addis Ababa was facing a legislative crisis. And uh, the legislative crisis emanated mostly from the fact that it was not heeding the calls of uh, the people of Ethiopia uh, or heeding the calls of uh, international partners to, to remain faithful to the promises it had made when it, it came to, to power. Uh, and we didn't want uh, TPLF as a ruling party of Tigray to also uh, continue to face a legitimacy crisis because we knew we needed the mandate of our people uh, in order to govern, in order to address uh, multifaceted uh, issues that Tigray had to grapple with, including, of course, the, uh, the threat that was being uh, flung against us uh, posed by Abi and his partners in crime. Uh, including Isaiah Saforki and Amhara expansionists. Whatever the, the, the consequences uh, of COVID, we knew we could contain them. We knew we could take and we did uh, appropriate measures to mitigate uh, the consequences, but we had to address the legitimacy crisis. Like I told you, uh, the first important uh, consideration for us was this is the, the right to self-determination was, was, was something the people of Tigray had paid, paid dearly for something the people of Tigray had fought uh, to the nail for, uh, and nothing uh, would detract from that, that right. Uh, and we had to do everything in our power to make sure that the people of uh, Tigray uh, indeed uh, exercise their right. Uh, and second, of course, uh, for TPLF, it was an issue of uh, maintaining legitimacy, uh, legitimacy in the sense that it needed to renew uh, its legitimacy by appealing directly to, to our people. So to the extent that uh, our people had uh, confidence in us, it was only incumbent upon them to express their, their, their uh, uh, acceptance, their confidence in, through, through the ballot box. Uh, and with legitimacy also comes uh, uh, the fullest possible involvement of the people of Tigray in all, all the multifaceted efforts that uh, we were engaging with security, uh, governance, development in all other areas that mean a lot to the people of Tigray. So it, 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 it simply was a question of first uh, exercising our right to self-determination and second a question of uh, ensuring the legislation for people and remaining faithful to the constitutional principles that the people of Tigray had paid dearly for, and equally important, of course, it was about mobilizing uh, the cross-section of the people of Tigray uh, in our effort to counter all sorts of uh, challenges, political, economic, and social. Thank you. Um, some people say that the election provoked the war. Um, what do you make of that? No, uh, the, the, the war had already been in the making. Uh, it's been... From the get-go, Abi and his partners, especially Isaiah Saforke, were adamant that, uh, uh, to the extent that uh, they were going, they they would uh, 
put in place a system in the Horn of Africa where they would say yes and no to choices of people, to choice of government, uh, then the only obstacle that stands in the way of their, their ambition was the people of Tigray and TPLF. So the people of, the people of Tigray and TPLF from the get-go were deemed uh, obstacles to their ambition. So it was only a matter of time before they could, uh, they could uh, take what they considered to be appropriate measures to make sure that TPLF and the people of Tigray were either cowed into submission or, as, as it turned out, destroyed from, wipe, wiped, out, wiped out from the face of the earth. Uh, the election, you know, to, to even pretend for a moment that elections uh, about, making pe uh, about people making choices uh, led to war, that has now created a situation where we have now to make choices between uh, the continuity or otherwise of the, the Ethiopian state would, 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 would still be very foolhardy. Uh, to expect elections to be a source of the kind of devastating war that has been visited upon Tigray, the kind of genocidal campaign that has been unleashed by Eritrea, uh, Isaiah Safork and Abi, Abi, Abi Ahmed and his, his uh, Amhara expansionist partners, uh, that would require a bit of a stretch. Uh, yes, it was used as a pretext to unleash the war, but uh, like, I, like I said, the war had been in the making for, for almost three years. Uh, the demonization, demonizing campaign of TPLF and the people of Tigray had been going on for uh, more than three years before, before uh, um, actual shooting started uh, uh, roughly a year ago, uh, the, 20, uh, the, the 4th of uh, uh, November. Uh, so basically, it was a question of whether Abiy Ahmed and Isaiah Safarqi were ready to live with uh, people who are in a position to assert their rights to self-determination or not. It was a question of whether they could live with a people who take their democratic rights seriously. It was a question of whether they could live with a people who take their right to self-determination seriously, their democratic aspirations seriously, their prince constitutional principles seriously. So, yes, Abiy Ahmed uh, considered the people of Tigray and TPLF as obstacles to his uh, imperial ambitions in Ethiopia. He, he wants to coronate himself as a king of kings of Ethiopia. And, uh, uh, and the only stab obstacle for his imperial ambition was the people of Tigray and TPLF. So, so it was only a matter of time before uh, he could uh, pounce on TPLF and the people of Tigray. And the same was true uh, when it comes to Isaiah Safarki, who considered the people of Tigray and TPLF uh, obstacles to his hegemonic ambitions, pharaonic ambitions in, in the Horn of Africa. Uh, for Amhara expansionists, uh, they would uh, claim every territory uh, that comes their way as their own, uh, every land as their own, and it's not just the land that belongs to Tigray or the people of Tigray, it's also in Benishangul Gumuz, in Oromia, in other parts of, in Afar as well, in other parts of Ethiopia. So. For them, uh, the only obstacle that stood in the way of uh, their uh, territorial ambitions, their expansionist ambitions were TPLF and the, the people of Tigray. So it was a confluence of uh, interests of sorts that brought them together. And of course, like I said, it was a matter of time before. Uh, so the, the, ex ex the election was only used as a pretext for them to unleash a war that they have, they have, uh, they have unleashed against our people, of course. Uh, the, to say that it was indeed uh, the reason and the cause of the war uh, would require a bit of a stretch. Um, even though TPLF was the winning party, the election involved various opposition parties, Tigray Independence uh, Party, Salsai Wayani Tigray, uh, Baitona Abbai Tigray, and uh, Asimba, including 2,600 polling stations, uh, 2.7 million voters registered, the voter turnout was uh, very high and exciting, with many voting for their uh, very first time. So why do you think the central government failed to recognize the Tigrayan people's right to self-governance? Well, it's quite obvious. Uh, the so-called central government doesn't have in, in its DNA the tendency or the, cap the capacity to, uh, to recognize people's choices for what it is. Uh, it's, it's kind of, it must be obvious for Abiy Ahmed, who, uh, 
publicly declared that he, his mother told him that he would one day become the seventh king uh, of Ethiopia, whatever the, the, the choice of the people of Ethiopia or the choice of the uh, people of Tigray. Uh, would only be a mere statistics. It's, 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 it's going to be relevant whether the people of Ethiopia chose their leader or not. For him, he is a king of kings of Ethiopia, courtesy of his mother's prophecy. And I, I would be surprised if he were to take the choice of the people of Tigray uh, any seriously than he did. So the most important thing is this is not a guy who would recognize the people's choice as something uh, very important. This is not a guy who uh, thinks the people of Tigray have the right to self-determination. This is not a guy who thinks the people of Ethiopia have the right to self-determination. So whatever he says must go. Uh, so it's, a, it's quite obvious. Uh, Abi, uh, elections for Abiy are just minor inconveniences to, to be grappled with, not, not uh, stuff to be taken seriously. So he's waiting for his coronation, even as we speak. He's, he's working on his coronation. And whether uh, that involves the will of the Ethiopian people is quite secondary as far as I was concerned. So I, I, I wasn't surprised, and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised uh, that Abiy didn't uh, recognize the choice of the people of Tigray. Okay. Um, what provoked the war on November 2020 um, that the Ethiopian government started under the pretenses of law enforcement? Well, like, uh, it's, it's quite obvious. Uh, Abi and Isaias had been on record threatening action against uh, Tigray. Abi was on record threatening the people of Tigray uh, against any, any, uh, any serious move such as uh, exercising their right to vote. He, he, he proudly declared that he would, he would uh, ensure the mothers of Tigray uh, would lose their children and their properties destroyed and their infrastructures absolutely demolished if, if they go ahead with elections. I mean, it was quite obvious. But in the, in the run up to the flare up uh, of, of hostilities on the 4th of no November, Abi had already uh, deploying practically all Ethiopian NDF divisions uh, either inside or around uh, Tigray. Most of them were deployed in Gondar. Uh, most of, uh, uh, I mean, probably great many of them were deployed around uh, Raya. Uh, and the uh, Northern Common people were also given contingency papers to take action against uh, TPLF leaders uh, and the special police uh, forces that uh, we, we had back then. Uh, so, what transpired on the 4th of November was uh, uh, people who didn't uh, think heeding Abi's remark, Abi's orders to, to attack Tigray uh, uh, was constitutional. Those who, who, who didn't think it was a good idea to heed Abi's remark uh, said so and acted uh, with us. Uh, to neutralize uh, the kind of moves uh, some of Abi's uh, staunch uh, supporters in the Northern Command were about to make. And second, uh, all the forces that were deployed uh, around Raya and Gondar uh, had already uh, started the hostilities. And it was, uh, it was simply uh, a question of time, like I said, uh, before Abi, would, Abi and Isaias would unleash their, uh, their, their uh, invasion, uh, but uh, uh, it was part of a, a, long, a long process that culminated in the kind of hostilities that erupted on the 4th of November, November. but it had uh, long been in the making, and uh, I, I don't think it could have been avoided unless there was a change of, uh, there was a change of heart on the part of Isaiah Safork in Abiy Hamel and it would be uh, naive for us to expect that kind of uh, change of heart uh, because they were, um, they were adamant that the only thing that stood in the way of their either territorial or imperial or pharaonic ambitions in the whole of Africa was TPLF and the people of Tigray. So they had to be eliminated at all costs. That was pretty much why uh, the war was unleashed uh, on Tigray. Okay, thank you.
um, there are accusations from central government that you are conspiring with uh, foreign powers to dismantle uh, Ethiopia. How do you respond to that? Well, Ali has, has, has conspired with foreign powers, including uh, Isaiah Saforge, to dismantle Ethiopia. And Abi has done a very excellent job of making sure that Ethiopia is dismantled. Uh, I don't think I can best, I can outdo Abi in his job of dismantling Ethiopia. He has already done it in a very super manner. It's very unfortunate. We're dealing with uh, the destruction, not just destruction of property and infrastructure, but also the loss of uh, hundreds of thousands of lives. Uh, Abi Ahmed is sending uh, ill-equipped uh, armed tens of thousands of soldiers as cannon fodder. Uh, since the liberation of Magala in many parts of Tigray, we've been fighting. Uh, even as we speak today, we're fighting in, in uh, many parts of Amhara. And the number of people, most of them unarmed, most of them carrying machetes, uh, some of them carrying backward weapons uh, that are being sent as cannon fodder is quite staggering. Uh, TPLF has never conspired with any foreign power. In fact, uh, we are under siege now. Uh, there is no outlet for uh, uh, Tigrayan armed forces to count on uh, for uh, missiles or uh, for munitions or for uh, artillery pieces. We can only count on uh, Abiy Ahmed's uh, army for, for artillery, for tanks, for uh, armored personnel carriers, for munitions. Uh, as we speak today, we have captured more weapons than we have captured the last uh, months or so, uh, courtesy of, of course, Abiy Ahmed's forces. So who are we going to, going to conspire with when there is no outlet whatsoever that we can uh, contact, when there is no communication whatsoever, when the people of Tigray have been cut off from the rest of the world and from the rest of Ethiopia. When humanitarian access to the needy here in Tigray is being deliberately denied by Abu Ahmed, what sort of conspiracy can we possibly manage to have with the rest of the world? Uh, I, I, I am hard pressed to, to find any entity that we can uh, have a decent communication with, let alone to conspire against uh, the Ethiopian state. But the bottom line is, Abi has done a very good job of dismantling Ethiopia by working, collaborating with a guy who, the last 60 years of his life, made it his vocation to dismantle Ethiopia. Isaiah Safolke has never had any vocation than dismantling Ethiopia. So he has been working day and night, hand in glove, with, with Isaiah Safolke and with Amahara expansionists. Amahara expansionists would, would have you believe that they have the best interest of the Ethiopian state, no matter what that means. Uh, however, that, that mean, however, that means, but they, they still are working with Isasa Forke, the most implacable enemy, enemy of Ethiopia. And to, to accuse TPLF or the Tigrayan Armed Forces of conspiring with foreign forces to dismantle Ethiopia, that's quite preposterous. In fact, Abi has done a very good job, uh, tragically, of course, a uh, very good job of dismantling Ethiopia, working in collaboration with people whose only lifetime vocation is dismantling Ethiopia. Isaiah Saraforki, of course, springs to mind. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you believe there is a peaceful solution to our current situation? Well, as long as there is commitment to peace, uh, especially if the Ethiopian people uh, somehow find it in their heart to ask mm, seemingly serious questions such as, where are our kids going? What happened to the hundreds of thousands of soldiers we sent to Tigray? Whatever happened to the youth who were, as, as you pointed out in your question, were in, in quite an Orwellian twist, uh, sent on a, on a law enforcement mission with tanks, with uh, helicopter gunships, with, with uh, Sukhoi 27 fighters, bombers. What happened to those? Wh whatever happened to the arsenals that were sent to destroy Tigray? Whatever happened to the tanks that were sent in law enforcement mission. If the people of Ethiopia were to ask such inconvenient questions for a moment, yes, people uh, like Abiy Ahmed would, would stop at nothing uh, to destroy even millions of people as long as they think it would be in the best interest of, uh, it would be in, the, in, in their best interest, best interest being 
maintaining their grip on power. Uh, unless such serious questions are asked by people whose, whose voices really matter, I'm not sure if, the, if Abi thinks the voice of the people of Ethiopia matter, uh, peace will, will, will remain an, an illusion. Uh, but it is still possible, it's still possible, we, we have made it abundantly clear that uh, Tigray is under siege. The people of Tigray have been cut off from communications, cut off, electricity is cut off, uh, humanitarian aid is been denied. Uh, there is a systematic attack on Tigray's livelihoods, and we, st we, we will continue to take appropriate measures until state times that our conditions are met. So, yes, it is still possible to, to, to resolve uh, this peacefully, but it takes people who take in peaceful, who, to, who to take peaceful uh, solutions to problems seriously uh, enough to, to really uh, consider this a very viable option. But if experience is any guide, Abi will, will do everything to, to, to continue the war as long as he doesn't feel the heat, he will continue to, to use uh, many more thousands, hundreds of thousands of people's cannon fodders will continue to, to take appropriate measures uh, if there is readiness on the part of the people of Ethiopia and other parties to arm twist Abi into, into considering uh, peace as a viable option, there would be a possibility. But not all possibilities translate into likelihoods. That's my, 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 my fear. Thank you. Um, could you clarify the terms of the ceasefire negotiations and cessation of uh, hostilities? Well, we, we've, uh, we, we just made it, the cessation of hostilities uh, can only come about if, at the very minimum, the siege that has been imposed on Tigray is lifted. What has communications to do with, telecommunication services to do with uh, Abyss war on Tigray? What has electricity to do with Abyss war on Tigray? Uh, what has denying humanitarian food aid to the needy to do with the war on Tigray? Let him fight his war. We'll fight our war. But let him lift the siege first. If we are going to discuss anything about cessation of hostilities or comprehensive ceasefire, the first order of business for Abi is to at least lift the siege on the people of Tigray. He wants to uh, to 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 maintain a chokehold on the people of Tigray, want to continue to kill the people of Tigray through other means than the barrel of gun, because we have managed to 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 to, uh, to send his forces farther away from Tigray, because we have managed to silence most of his guns, at least in this part of Tigray. Still, western part of Tigray is still suffering uh, under Abi and Isaias' forces. Now he wants us to continue the war. He wants us to continue our children, con continue to kill our children. Continues, he wants us to continue to kill our mothers through other means. And let him stop that before, e before even considering uh, any talks about talks, if you will. If we are going to settle for a negotiated ceasefire, and then there are basic, fundamental red lines that, 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 that could not be uh, compromised. So the first order of vision is for, for, for Abi to lift the siege on Tigray. Uh, of course, every square inch of our territory needs to be cleared from, from our enemies, be it Eritrean forces, Amhara expansionists, or um, uh, Abi's forces. Uh, that is, is an absolute minimum. Uh, you see, the most important is, you know, there are so many uh, uh, issues that we have put forward, like the restoration of the, the, the government of uh, the legislative elected government of Tigray. To, to, we have managed to do so through the barrel of gun, uh, but our, we are denied our budget. We are part of the federation and we need um, to get our budget. Uh, the civil service taxpayers' money needs to be uh, made available for our people, for our civil servants. To, I mean, people in, in urban areas are suffering. Even in the, mostly in the brink of starvation, and even in at times dying of uh, starvation, because what little savings they have in the banks, they cannot access them because banking services are absolutely uh, cut off. 
So these are the kinds of things we expect the so-called central government to do even before we consider sitting together and negotiating a ceasefire. These are at least the absolute minimums that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. We have already made the details public, but at least for clarification's sake, these are the kinds of things we expect the so-called central government to do, and whoever uh, wants to mediate, uh, there is a plethora of efforts uh, to mediate, uh, and at least uh, access to humanitarian aid, uh, the lifting of the siege, uh, the withdrawal of uh, enemy forces from every square inch of Tigray territory are some of the absolute minimum uh, conditions that need to be met before we, we uh, sit together for a negotiated ceasefire. Thank you. Uh, you have had an interesting year, unusual for a politician in the 21st uh, century. You were put in a position where you couldn't find food, had to walk uh, for days. Uh, you lived with uh, farmers in the most remote areas of Tigray. Uh, what was the experience like and how has it shaped um, or affected your way of being or rather uh, thinking? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, the fact that... Uh, I found myself in those situations and even worse situations. I, I kind of consider it a blessing in disguise. I kind of got to know uh, how resilient uh, our people are, how wise the hardy peasant uh, in Tigray is, uh, and how re resolute uh, the hardy peasant in Tigray is in fighting injustice. Uh, it's very difficult to describe the kind of situation. I, I have seen ups and downs and one thing that remained consistent throughout uh, my stay with peasants is that they were absolutely confident that we would overcome this. I remember I, it, it was on the 18th, probably 16th, yeah it must be 16th of December. We were, uh, were you know, we were in doldrums to say the least. And I, I was uh, climbing a very steep mountain and there was a citizen uh, who was uh, at least showing us a way and he told us in a very uh, point blank way you're going to overcome this. Three, four months, believe me. Uh, you will defeat your enemy. And he gave me all kinds of details, of course. And the fact that I wasn't as confident, but this peasant was absolutely confident, simply meant uh, millions of things for me. So wherever I go, this is the same level of confidence that, that raised our, uh, kept our morals high. Uh, and of course, I saw firsthand how, how uh, not just well-meaning and generous and caring the people of Tigray are, but also how determined they are in the face of injustice, how wise and how brave those hardy peasants are in the face of injustice. And if it wasn't for, for that kind of uh, steely determination, I probably would not have survived. But, yeah, it's, it's for the books. Tons of things to talk about. Great. Um, so what do you think the new year will bring for Ethiopian politics? Well, I, I, it, it requires uh, a, a very fertile imagination to, to, to put what, is going to, what tomorrow has in store for us as far as Ethiopian politics go. Uh, I can only say something about Tigray. Uh, there is no chance. There is no chance. Avi and company will come to haunt my sisters, my children, my mothers. That's all I can say. Uh, if there is a determination on the part of uh, sensible people in Ethiopian politics uh, to call a spade a spade and to tell Abiy Ahmed that his, his, uh, his uh, murderous adventure needs to stop, then there will be a chance if there is an inclusive dialogue of thoughts for, for, uh, for, for us to sort out. And I, I hope Ethiopian people deserve to... to, to deserve peace more than anyone else. Uh, the people of Tigray deserve peace. The rest of Ethiopia deserves peace as well. Uh, 
we in Tigray will make sure Abi doesn't constitute a threat anymore. Amhara expansionists do not constitute a threat anymore. Eritrea, Isaiah Saforki, does not constitute a threat anymore. If by doing so, we contribute to Ethiopia becoming peaceful, Ethiopian politics becoming more inclusive, that would be the icing on the cake. But uh, I, we, are not, uh, we're, we are not particularly interested in punching above our weight. We are only interested in making sure the safety and security of Tigray and the people of Tigray is, is uh, beyond the reach of uh, travel makers such as Isaiah Safork and Abiy Ahmed. Uh, that, for us, is the most important objective, and we're, we're confident with our people, uh, with, with, with the determination of our armed forces, we'll be able to achieve that. Uh, we still have a long way to go before making sure that uh, those threats do not pose significant uh, travel to the people of Tigray, but we are on the right path, we are on the right track. Uh, but I hope by doing so, uh, we'll also contribute to making Ethiopian politics much more inclusive and much more peaceful. That's all I can say. Thank you uh, for your time, Gitacho, and Happy New Year. You too. <laughs> Thank you. That wraps up our program for today. Again, I'm Salam Burhana. Thank you for watching. See you uh, next week at the same time with another guest.